Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck and this footage you're about to see was recorded during the early access event for Magic 2021. So the account was given to me by Wizards of the Coast and one of the decks I enjoyed playing during the early access event was this mono black Demon Den deck, I like to call it. It's a deck featuring Archfiend's Vessel, one of the new cards from M21, a 1 mana 1 1 lifelink human cleric, and when the Archfiend enters a battlefield, if it entered from your graveyard or you cast it from your graveyard, exile it, and if you do, it makes a 5 5 black demon creature token with flying. So if we can get back Vessel in uh, some capacity, whether it's with a Call of the Death Dweller getting it back or Lurus helping us replay it from the graveyard, we get to turn it into a 5 5 demon, which is quite powerful for just 1 mana. And in order to help us find the Archfiend's Vessel, we also have the full playset of Fiend Artisan. And this is probably one of the best homes I've found for it, so far in standard at least. So 2 mana Nightmare that can uh, get plus 1 plus 1 for each creature card in our graveyard. And for X and Black Green Hybrids, and we can tap the Fiend Artisan, sacrifice another creature and search our library for a creature card with convert mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield. So we can search up a... Archfiend's Vessel just by paying 2 mana and sacrificing a creature and later in the game we can also get Lures back for 4 mana total and then 1 additional mana to get Vessel back from the graveyard which is not too expensive. And then there's a bunch of situations where you might want to get other creatures with Fiend Artisan which makes playing the deck pretty challenging as well as you'll constantly need to think about what to do with your Fiend Artisan activations. And then besides the Archfiend's Vessel, we've got some other nice recursive creatures. Gutter Bones as a 1 mana 2 one that can potentially keep coming back from the graveyard. And Sari the Scorpion, also a nice one to sacrifice as it can deal a ton of damage to the opponent. And another new addition from M21 is the Village Rites, another sacrifice outlet, 1 mana instant. As an additional cost to cast it, we have to sacrifice a creature. And then we get to draw 2 cards, so very powerful for just 1 mana. And another sacrifice outlet to put some creatures in the graveyard, of course, is Priest of Forgotten Gods, or that can easily make a bunch of expendable creatures we don't mind sacrificing to the Priest. Gutter Bone's a great example. And then the opponent will have to sacrifice a creature as well, lose two life. We get to draw cards, and we get to add two black mana to our mana pool, which is perfect for getting back a Gutter Bones after we've dealt two damage to the opponent. Then we've got the full playset of Mire Triton, which can help put additional creatures in our graveyard for Fiend Artisan, for Lurus, and for Call of the Death Dweller. And the 2-1 Death Touch is still a reasonable creature. And then two copies of Lazotep Reaver, which can create two bodies for us to sacrifice to the Priest of Forgotten Gods, and our other various sacrifice effects, so sometimes it's nice to go a bit wide. And then at 3 mana we've got our Call of the Death Dweller, which is great at bringing back multiple vessels at once, or can bring back Lurus, which can then in turn get back vessels. And then uh, 3 copies of Lurus. We're just playing Lurus in the main deck instead of in the companion slot, so we don't have to spend 3 mana putting it into our hand first, which can be too slow. And then we still get to play 3 copies in the main deck, so we're pretty likely to draw one, or search it up with Fiend Artisan if we need it. But you could potentially approach the deck with Lurus in the companion slot as well. Although then you don't get to play with Liliana, Waker of the Dead, which is our last card here. 4 mana Planeswalker from M21. The plus 1 makes each player discard a card, and if the opponent doesn't discard a card, they lose 3 life. The minus ability gives target creature minus x minus x until end of turn, where x is the number of cards in our graveyard, so also works nicely with the whole self-mill theme. And then the ultimate can also be quite powerful. But the main reason I like Liliana is that it's a curve topper in a pretty low curve deck, so we're often going to be empty-handed by the time we start plusing Liliana, so it's going to be mostly one-sided, making the opponent discard, and then the minus gives us access to another nice removal spell. And then the mana base, we've got 19 swamps and 4 castles. We're also often going to be activating castles in a late game in this deck. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Priest against the mono green deck, maybe? This is gonna be good. 
All right, sequencing. They probably take two if I attack, and if they don't, that's still fine. Opponent's already at 12. Alright. So it's a mono green ramp deck, presumably. Could still kind of burn them out with Priest, although against Uro... That might not be super reliable. Yeah, it seems like there's going to be an Ugin incoming. I'll just activate Castle. Although I'm not sure how we're supposed to beat Ugin. Not the Ugin I was expecting. They might have the other one next turn. Another time, Planeswalker. Yeah, I assume that if they have eight mana Ugin, I'm just dead. Alright, I guess we're all in. Alright, sweet. Well, we dodged Ugin.
they don't have any lands in hand, so they probably have lures in hand at that point. I want to be able to minus on lures if they play it. Ruining your day is going to feel great. Probably still discards Swamp here. Sorry for your loss. Massacre Worm. They pretty much need their own Call of the Death Dweller here. Jeez. This is a bit too clunky. I guess they have their glorious anthem here. I would be happy to trade given call in hand. Or I can just sack the vessel to the artisan next turn. Yeah, I guess I can get a Mire Triton, but it's probably too slow. But that's probably my best bet here. And the next turn, Call of the Death Dweller some stuff back or go lure us into vessel. If this is unbreakable formation we're probably dead. We work together. We can achieve peace. Yeah the minus two is pretty good here. Is there anything I can do? Jeez. 
So four blockers. If I attack and kill this, three blockers. So then I'm taking Xaxes. So I can attack. Yeah, three mana make five attacking one one tokens. Pretty good card. Oh, that should do it. Hmm, don't think I like the four lander here. This is better. Maybe ditch the village rights. Fiend Artisan can put stuff in the graveyards for call. And then we can maybe use call to get back vessel. So if we get the chance, we want to attack with gutter bones, sack it to the artisan, get vessel. The Powerling. All right. Sag Vessel getting another Vessel. And then next turn we can set up Death Dweller making two five fives. I guess I should have attacked for one first. Missed out on one life. So I guess the paralleling works quite well with the field. Send in one demon. And we'll keep up rights in case we need to chum block and sacrifice. Artisan's pretty nice being able to get all those uh, vessels out of the deck. Alright, this is gonna hurt. So 
So I can trade Demon for Spitfire, jump Paraling with Vessel, sack it to the right. Do I want a village rights end of turn? Don't think so. I mean, I need to win the game next turn pretty much. So I can attack for five. Priest is two. Let's start here, I guess. So if I attack with the five fives, one gets chummed by the fields. I guess it works, right? Because then priest can kill one of the two creatures, either Torbrand or the Paraling dies. Not sure if that was the correct play, but I guess it worked out. All right. Fine hands. I don't think my creature is surviving here. Artism might be more important than Priest. Not sure. Maybe if some creatures die, the Artism will be big enough to survive a shock or what have you. Why not Lur's Companion? Because we're playing Lur's in the main deck. Spending three mana to put it from our sideboard into our hand is often a bit too pricey. But it's possible we can build it with Companion too. Sadly, that exiles the skeleton. Um, probably not worth it to activate Priest then. Just use Artisan to get more vessels. Yeah, Blitz is very good against our deck.
So next turn I could get Lurus and then play a Vessel out of the Graveyard. At least that's the plan. Could also jump and right, and then hope to just draw Lurus or Call of the Death Dweller, so there's six of those in the deck. Alternatively, I just take 7, 8, 9, fall to 11, use Fiend for 3, sacking Vessel after attacking for 1, get Lurus, I think that's probably better. Getting their last card could also be okay, but I think I stick to the plan. If their last card is finale, that's gonna be bad for me. And they're looking at the graveyard, so not a good sign. It's probably game over. Although Blitz not quite enough to kill the demon at least. I'm at one. Call of the Death Dweller, eh? What if I attack with Lurus? Sack Lurus to get another vessel. So that's two mana. Four left, one for village right, sacking vessel. Three for call. And then I get to make two five fives, but then I guess I'm still at one. So that doesn't work. Unless I attack and they take it, but it's probably not happening. More rights. The best thing about zombies is their adoring obedience. I feel strong. Technically not dead on board at least. <laughs> This deck's pretty tough to play. So many lines with Fiend Artisan. Yeah, definitely want to try this uh, Finale deck next.
Doesn't look like I'll be able to activate Priest next turn. Ooh, Vessel in the Graveyard. It's good with Lurs. So I'll probably wait until turn 4 to do that. So I have to send everyone at Teferi, and then I get to go Lurus Replay Vessel. Or I can hold that in case there's a Shadow the Sky incoming. Do I beat Shatter the Sky? It's going to be tough. Do I activate Priest now? Or I can pass. I guess we'll just play line and pass. Drawing village rights would be nice here. Sadly, we don't. What are my plays next turn? Could get Lurus. Although I don't have any vessels left. But I guess just Lurus getting value from the graveyard is fine. Could get removal for Fiend Artisan. Time wipe for next turn. We're definitely getting close. I guess with Scorpion we might get there actually.
showed a bit of resiliency against uh, board wipes too. So it's a nice trait. So in conclusion, Demon Den. Yeah, seems like a pretty powerful deck. Definitely the best home for Fiend Artisan and Standard so far that I've seen. Definitely a lot of numbers we can potentially mess around with. The numbers of village rights. There's other one drops we could experiment with, like the Whisper Squad. Not sure if the Reaver's the ideal two drop here, but it seems reasonable with priests. And then uh, Lurs in the main deck so far has seemed pretty good. So don't really miss Lurs as companion. The numbers on Call of the Death Dweller and Lurus are also things we can potentially change. And Liliana seems decent in this deck because we're a relatively low curve deck, so we can often be empty handed by the time we play Liliana, which makes her plus one much more effective. And we've got a bit of synergy with the minus since we're filling the graveyard with Mire Triton and all these various sacrifice effects. So yeah, I like the deck quite a bit. We'll definitely keep working on it. So that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.